So I've done plenty of videos on how we've built networks for other people, but a few people after seeing my office tour said, how'd you build a network for your office? So I'm putting this together for you, uh, starting at the server rack here. So at the very top, we got a couple TP-Link gigabit switches. I bought them because they were on sale. Uh, the thorough put and performance of them, I've actually compared them to some of the higher end switches we put at clients marginal like very small differences in speed nothing we can really notice uh, so i went and picked those now there's two of them because the top one is our server side network and the bottom one is more the client side network we keep everything segmented so the servers are on one side and the clients on the other now uh, then we have our patch panel here now because this is not the only piece of our network there's not too much stuff plugged in back here all the servers are plugged in back here and a couple runs that go through the back of the building we went ahead and put back here uh, for distance. The majority of them I'm gonna show you are in the rack that's up front and we'll cover that in a minute. So all this is set up in a uh, telco rack that I acquired, I don't know, maybe 15 years ago. It's a really nice looking telco rack. I do like it. It's got these cool things and we got all their stickers and stuff on it. Uh, it's, it's pretty cool. We put some lights in it because you know, makes it go faster something like that uh, but it work, it's been working really well for us it's really really well built this is not flexible this thing doesn't uh, teeter-totter around at all I mean it is extra solid and probably weighs I'm guessing in the neighborhood of 250 300 pounds empty uh, but it works really well like I said I acquired it from a telco that went out of business and they had all these cool looking racks um, then we have a couple shelves in here for things like the monitor. We have one hard drive uh, that is for a backup for one Windows server that's not mine. There's no actual Windows servers in my rack uh, other than one we host for a client. Uh, keep some of their stuff here and that's the backup system for it. All the other backups that we have are synced off-site. I'm going to do a separate video of kind of our software stack and how I'm doing all the backups for that. Then we have our PF Sense box, which is the next one down. And uh, got our cool stickers on it. It's maybe a little overbuilt i had the case and uh, we put in you know this big for you case it's really not necessary for it because it only has one ssd in it and a standard motherboard nothing real exciting in there and a standard intel four port network card to segment out the networks uh, the pf sense because we're not even using vlans i mean could uh, but all this is set up with direct hardware so uh, direct physical network. So the network segmentation up there is one wire is going up to one switch, one wire is going to the other switch. So they're physically separate networks. There's not any way to uh, escape a VLAN because they're physically separate. And then the PF Sense controls the routing for it, uh, which it controls the routing also because for the different networks, uh, there's a couple pinholes based on IP addresses that allow access to the servers, and then you hit the server access list. Now, all the servers, once again, there's two network cards in the server stack. This is our virtualization system, and we're using VirtualBox running on top of Debian, and it handles all the virtual machines. And this is on a RAID array we put together using SSD. So it boots up and is ready to go in a matter of seconds. And because Debian and they're all headless, it doesn't take long for the entire stack to start up. So in the event of a power failure, this boots up like immediately. Within a couple of minutes, just everything's back up and running. Um, and then the bottom one is our FreeNAS box. And it has several terabytes of storage and it's got segmented storage as well. Uh, one side backs up uh, my business documents and more critical stuff. Uh, and especially like all my videos and everything are actually real time synced. So instead of even putting a RAID array in my computer, I'm using sync thing to send everything over here. But then all the business documents are also synced over here over sync thing and then roll over off-site to another location for backups and all that's done with uh, GPG, GPG, GPGG in compression. <laughs> I don't have trouble saying that. Um, and so all the data at rest is of course encrypted that way even though it's on an encrypted partition and sync thing has got uh, its own access list rules and encryption. We also have the backups that are being done hourly off of the server encrypted before they're sent over there. So all the database and critical files that we create uh, through our wiki system and through our point of sale system, CRM system that we designed, uh, the database backs up every hour uh, from 9 a.m. until 7 p.m. and then it does uh, back up again starting the next morning. So we're only backing up hourly during our business hours and but every hour there's a backup made uh, so we can actually do rollback snapshots and honestly databases compress really well so they're not very big. So it's not a big storage burden. And then after so many days, we're purging them. Right now it's 30. 
I could set it to more if I wanted to, but 30 seems adequate for now. At the very bottom of this, I got a couple things sitting on top of it, so it's a little harder to see, and it's because we didn't know where to put the extra rack. I got a little USB keyboard in case I have to plug anything in. I just keep it handy at the bottom. Uh, there's an extra tray, just didn't know where to put it, so we left it there. We were not using it. At one time, we were when we had some other stuff set on it, um, and then it's covering up a... Uh, tw I think it's a 2700 watt. The model number is missing because I got a really good deal on a new UPS that was missing a faceplate. And so why not use it? It's nothing wrong with it. It was actually still new. Uh, it was like a damaged one and we got it through a vendor we knew. He's like, hey, I got a really great deal on this. It's new, uh, but the faceplate got destroyed. So I don't remember the model number on it, but I know the models on the batteries, but I'm not pulling those out right now to show that. Uh, it was some type of uh, Dell branded APC, I think is what it is. But that's pretty much how the rack looks on here. It's pretty straightforward, pretty simple, uh, but we keep the wiring clean. It makes it really easy to manage. Um, I guess I can give you a peek real quick around the back here. So in the back here, this kind of comes down. We had more of this uh, orange conduit. It keeps all the wiring nice and clean when it comes to the rack. Comcast left a lot of slack with the uh, cable modem they have. So that comes through with, uh, eh, I twist it around. It's not too ugly. But this keeps this looking nice. This rack has Velcro straps all along the side here, which allows us to keep all of these nice and tight and everything goes down in a nice and neat manner. At the top of the rack, you see we got our power switches. Uh, we coiled everything up to each of the switches in there and then it runs all the way down to the UPS down at the bottom. And you know, just for keeps any type of issues at bay, all of this side is network cable and then all of this side is wiring. So any power cords go on this side of the rack and network cabling on this side up and down to keep everything nice and neat and the power away from the rack. Not likely that there's much interference, but you know, I just keep it all separate makes my life easier. And you can see when we do the punch downs, and it's a little hard to see with the lighting, but they're all clean. And we try to keep it clean at the back and then put all the different labels. The This burning FreeBSD, this is how it labels the network adapters uh, on the PF Sense box, so they're labeled exactly like that. Makes it easy so I know exactly where I'm plugging into. And our power is installed with a uh, 25 amp circuit with a twist lock so you can't pull this out so you're not worried about the you know it falling out or anything it's like they go in and uh, you go in and give it a twist and pull it in and out on here so keeps that nice and solid we have the Comcast mounted to the wall here before the loop goes back up and around so here's the rack at the front of the store and once again we have so many punch downs at the front this is where the majority of the work is for the network so we have another TP link uh, down to all two of the same ones again, uh, the gigabit TP links. And here's our uplinks that are from there. One goes to this one, one goes to the uh, bottom, one goes to the top from the back. And we could have run it in here and then run it out, but we figured, hey, why not have two feeds to the source? Because, well, it's not that far of walking into the building. Then we have a rainbow of colors they chose to use. Usually we use one solid color, but we said, why not make it a rainbow? Uh, the tricky part is we had this up here, had this down here. These are kind of, these are the ones we had. We could custom cut them, maybe we'll later, uh, so they exactly fit. But with the TP link, all the ports are here, and with the 48 port, they're all the way across. So we kind of have this little, I don't know, it looks kind of messy, but it's how we left it now because we had work to do and uh, you know people who were paying us. When you're not getting paid to do the work, you, Sometimes do a little bit different. I mean, it's still clean, it's still organized, but it's not as perfectionate as when we're being paid to do the work. <laughs> so we did it like this. But that's kind of the summary of the network. Um, all these are labeled, so all the different ports here are labeled across the store, and all the groupings are together of them. So it's really easy to find any one of them on here. Uh, we have some Unify equipment. So here are the uh, Unify power bricks. We just set them down here in the bottom and plugged them in line. Where they go we have them labeled for the WAP here so that's what powers like the unified cameras and the unified uh, WAPs that we have installed in here so just kind of a, that's a quick overview of how the network works it's pretty straightforward pretty simple uh, we did make it look nice by putting everything in this conduit and kind of hiding things it does make it look really cool and that goes you know all the way down the benches and everything else uh, so instead of having this on here now the reason we just didn't fish it in the wall This is a wall with a fire stop in it There's no way to go down this wall and in so we actually go down and under and I'll actually give you a quick look at that So each of these that you see on the wall here 
are wired from under here. So the wiring comes from underneath. We've got it all hidden in this and goes up. And the way they brought it up was we actually drilled the holes here in the two by four, goes through the two by four and up. And then each one of them comes around and that goes to the other parts of the benches. So it keeps all the wiring nice and neat. Uh, there's not much hanging down here, but like I said, we couldn't come from above, so we come from below and then go up. Two fish each of these, and each of these are labeled corresponding, you know, like normal you do, uh, corresponding to the ports on there. So that was it. That's kind of our uh, rack tour, basic network setup tour, some of the physical stuff. If you have any other questions, comment, reply. We are going to, I'll do another video, maybe if I have time today, of how we have everything set up in terms of the software stack that we use and everything that actually runs the rack and some of the procedures we're using to set that up. Uh, thanks for watching. If you like the content here, like and subscribe.